Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back. Today's Daf is Ksuba Islam Ches. We are holding four lines from the top of the Yomit. Yesterday we came up with a list of many psukim which seem to indicate the same halacha, the same idea. When one is liable to Misa's best, then there is no way to redeem oneself through payment. You can't pay your way out of punishment. We had one pasuk regarding a fellow who is a Ritzeach, no money in that case, no payment, absolves him of Misa. We had another pasuk indicating the same idea. Why the repetition? So the Gemara came up with an idea. There are two types of Misa's. There is a type of Misa which, if that same very act was done, there would be a Kapora through a Karban. Then we have more severe, so to speak, more severe Misa's where if that were done, if that very act were done, there would be no room for kapara, there would be no option for khatas, etc. So perhaps, Pasuk number one is speaking about the most severe form of Misa, which allows no possibility, allows no kapara for the shagig option, in which case, you are in that case, uh, of course, you cannot pay instead of punishment. But, in the case where it's a Misa Kala, which means that this very Masa can allow for a, a Kapara, were it done by Shaykeg. In that case, it's, it's a lighter form of Misa. And perhaps payment can be issued in lieu of Misa. And that's why we need to suck him in either case, a fellow who is facing Misa Spezden cannot pay instead. Says the Gemara, four lines from the top of the Amid. Amalei Rava, so Rava responds to Rami Bar Chama. We need a Pasuk for this. Don't we already know this halacha, that any time a person is chay of Misa, there is no payment. Be it this type of chiv Misa or the other type. Amalei Rava, ha, this idea, made the Tana de Bechizki and Afka. Was already learned from Tana de Bechizki, the Tana de Bechizki. The Pasuk puts together striking an animal and, ki- and killing it with striking a person and killing him. We already had this connection a couple of days ago. Maka Adam or Maka Behima. The Torah links, connects killing a person to killing an animal. So we derive this comparison. Ma Maka Behima. Just as when one kills an animal, he always has to pay, irrelevant of the circumstance. It doesn't matter whether it was done by mistake or on purpose. A person is always responsible for his actions. And when it comes to damages, etc., you have to pay, regardless of whether it's shagig or mezid. Whether you had this animal in mind, you had something else in mind, it's irrelevant. You have to pay. Whether you kill the animal using a downward angling, swoop of your hand or use an upward motion it doesn't matter either way there's no exception to exempt him from this you have to pay in all circumstances just like by the animal you pay in all situations likewise the flip side the contrast by when one kills a person it's always going to be potter from mamain because maka adam generates misas bezn and misas bezn preempts any monetary Obligations. Af maki adam There's no difference under what circumstance it occurred. Bein shegigle mezid, whether it was by accident or on purpose. Bein miskaven l'sheim miskaven, whether you intended on killing this person or perhaps killing somebody else. Bein derech yirida l'derech aliyah, whether it was done using a downward angle or an upward motion. And we know that when something was done using a downward motion. If it was done by Shagig, there is a chiv of Gallus. And what does this price say? If one kills a person purposely, whether it was Derech Yerida, where if it would have been done by Shagig, there would be a possibility for a kapara through going into exile, or it was done Derech Aliyah, using an upward swoop, in which case there is no Gallus for the Shagig. Either way, Ben Derech Yerida, Derech Aliyah, Lechaiva Imamain. We never trigger a chi of mamun. Ela la poitri mamun is always potter from mamun. This very act is an act that either generated Mrs. Bezin or could generate Mrs. Bezin. 
Either way, we apply the concept of Paitroi Mamoin. There is no Chiv of Mamoin. So you see that even a, a Masa, which can potentially generate a Kapara, if it were done by Shagig, what is that Masa? If he kills a person, Derech Yerida. So he killed him by Mesa Derech Yerida. He gets Misa. But this very same act, if it were done by mistake, and in this very manner, Derech Yerida, he would have the Shagig Kapara, Golos option. And still, what does Tana the Chizke tell you? There's no Chiv moment. You never pay. You don't pay to exempt yourself up from Misa. You don't pay, pay in addition to the Misa. So we know this halacha from here. We don't need an extra pasuk for this. Ela ami Rabbi Bar says Rabbi Bar I'll explain to you why we need the extra pasuk. The kasha was we have an extra pasuk. Ela ami Rabbi Bar istrich. We need it for the following case. Perhaps I would think, Hanemili, when do we say this idea that we never uh, double penalize a person? Right, that's the recurring theme in the sugya. If a person kills somebody and while doing so he damages his uh, garment, he, he gets misa. We don't add payment to misa, and that's what the pasuk here is referring to. The extra pasuk is telling you that even in the following case, we don't double jeopardize a person. We need the extra pasuk with the following halacha. Not to say that, you know, don't pay instead of misa. But there would be room to think that you should pay in addition to misa. There would be room to think. When do we say that when Ruben kills Shimon, Ruben gets misa and no more? Don't add payment to that. That's speaking, for instance, in a case where he blinded him and killed him in the process. So Reuben gets, gets Misa for killing Shimon, and we don't hold him accountable separately for you know taking out his eye. There's no extra payment for that. Come with the Rabbi he gets the most severe punishment, and that's it. But let's say. He blinded him. As he was killing him, he blinded him. And he killed him in a different manner. So of course that happened simultaneously. In one moment. But blinding was not his cause of death. And with one hand he blinded him. With the other hand he killed him. So perhaps in this case, since blinding was not the cause of death. Perhaps. He should be obligated to pay for that eye. Comes the Pasuk and says, no. Once he gets me, so he's putter from anything else. Amalei Rava, so Rava responds to him. Ha Nami, this halacha as well is already known. It's been derived from the other b'risa, taught in the base of of Chizkiah, the Tana Dvei Chizkiah. We take an eye for an eye. And the Gemara Darshans, we don't take an eye and the person's life instead of a other person's eye. This is a, a sugi in Baba Kama. And Jesus says, well, the same way we Darshan this way, we'll say the other way around as well. We don't take a life and payment for the eye tachas nefesh when the other person gets killed. The bottom line is, once the victim dies, Reuben is put to death, and that's it. There's no additional payment. So we know this halacha. Hello, Marav Ashi. Says Rav Ashi, I'll tell you why we have the extra pasuk in our sukkah. Istrich is needed for the following case. Perhaps I would say. Every time a person is penalized financially, it's a knas. It's not basic financial obligations. These aren't mamun. It's not a matter of repaying principal. It's a special knas, let's say. An oinus, a mafati, pays you know, the 50 shkolm. That's a knas. So this idea of paying knas is a chidosh u shechid shatoy, right? It's something ad ordinary. It's not conventional. So perhaps I would say that is compatible with misa. Ordinary repayment doesn't work together with misa. You get misa, you pata from payment. But when it's knas, maybe the Torah piled on 
Another punishment. Another punishment. Afagav de miktal mishalom. Even if he'll get misa for doing this maasa, we can apply a knas as well. Kamash malan. That's why we need the extra pasik uh, to tell you that when a person is deserving of misa, he's exempt from any payment, be it basic payments, mamain, or even knas. Asks the Gemara, but this idea is not agreed upon by all. Remember, we have Chita's Rabbah, who disagrees. Or the Rabbah, the Amar, just the opposite. Since this idea of paying a knas is something unconventional, and therefore, even if a person is facing death, he'll pay the knas on top of that. So what does he do with this extra pasuk? That was the extra pasuk that we had yesterday. The answer is, he uses it for a different halacha. So have a look at Tanakama. He always liked the Tanakama, the Rav Hanani ibn Akavya. We had yesterday in Machlekes, the Tanakama Rav Hanani held that once a person is condemned to death, he no longer has value to the extent of that a person cannot declare, I will pledge this person's erech, this person's value, and give it to the Beis HaMikdash. Once a person has been issued a verdict of Misa, he no longer has that ability to be used as a catalyst for Erechen. That's what the Pasuk is coming to teach us. So we've accounted for all the Pasuk. Bottom line is, when a person is deserving of Misa, he's part of from any payment. We don't add payment. We don't take payment instead of the Misa. Be it this type of Chiv Misa, be it the other Chiv Misa. Uh, regarding Knas as well, we never add Knas to, to Misa, except according to Rabba. Continues the mission. So we speak about a Nara Hamuras. Sorry, we speak about the Knas, which is triggered when a person interacts forcefully with a, a Nara. That's the topic of our parak. Now, if you take a look at the Psukim, we find three stipulations, three conditions that have to be met. Number one, she has to be a Nara, past 12 years old, before she turns a Begeres, which is six months later. Number two, she has to be a Besula. Number three, the Pasuk says, Asher Loi Oirasa unengaged. So what happens if she's a Narosh and this Arsa? She was engaged at one point in this Garsha and she got divorced from this fellow. And a fellow now goes, interacts with her forcefully. Is there a Knas? Rabbi Yisak, Lili, Aymer, ain't no Knas. There's no Knas applicable in this situation. Pasuk says, Ashaloy Rasa. She had engagement. Now, let's play, pay close attention to the wording. It says she is arsa in this garsha. Not that she married, because if she was married, then she's considered a non-basula. Likewise, the Mishnah is speaking about she was engaged, but is no longer. And you know why? Because if she was engaged presently, then she's considered like an ashes ish. In which case, if a person interacts with her, there's misas bezin. Of course, when there's misas bezin, there's come labor the rabbi mine. There's no payment at all. So we picked a very specific case as the point of machlekes here between Rabbi Yisak Lili, who says. That once she has prior engagement history, even though she's no longer engaged, there is no knas, because it needs to conform with the words Ashaloy Ayrasa. Rabbi Kiva Aymer Yeshlo Knas, even in this case, if she was engaged in the past, but since she is no longer engaged, she has knas if one gets involved with her currently. The only difference is typically the knas payment is accepted by her father. In this case, it goes to her. That's the only change. Asks the Gemara, my time with Rabbi Saglili. Why does Rabbi Saglili exempt this fellow of Knas? Amakra, what do you mean it's a Pasuk? Ashaloy Ayrasa. This Nara has to be a non engaged Nara, which indicates, Hoy Ayrasa, that if she was even once engaged in the past, Ain Knas, she loses that Knas ability. Rabbi Kiva, what does he do with the Pasuk? Ashaloy Ayrasa, sure, if there is no Ayrasa, then Lavia. The knas uh, is extended to her father. He receives the payment. Ha but if she was a rasa, there is knas. Difference is, she receives it. Says the Gemara, what about the other stipulations in the Pasuk? She must be a nara. She must be a basula. Are you going to say the same there? Well, yeah. In order for her father to get, accept payment, she must be a nara. She must be a basula, but she's not a nara. She's not a basula, and she still gets knas, but it goes to her. Is that what you mean? Elamayat, if that's the case, and the Pasuk says she must be a Nara, which indicates Veloid Bagaris, and not 
a big error. So as well, you're going to say, Kana still applies. The only difference is the La'atzma, she keeps it. <laughs> or when the Pasuk says Besula, which indicates Beloi Beula. Hachinami there as well, you're going to say, well, even my Beula gets Knas. The only difference is this time it's La'atzma, the La'atzma, she receives it. The fact is, we never find any, any Mishnah, any Bryce, which should point in this direction that a Begeras or a Beula is deserving of Knas. So it's hard to believe that this, in fact, is true. Ela Lagam, oh. Apparently the Pasuk is absolute about it. Not a Basula, no Knas. You're not a Nara, no Knas. Hochanami Lagam, here as well. Pasuk says, Ashaloy Rasa. She who has Nis Arsa, skipped the Knas completely. Amach Rabakiva. Says Rabakiva, Hai Eloy Rasa. Hai Eloy Rasa. This Pasuk of Eloy Rasa is not coming to tell you that if she was engaged, she loses Knas. Me boile, look at this Sanya. It's needed for a different halacha. And therefore unavailable. To cancel the knas in this case. So the Brisa begins with Shitas Rabesi Aglili, actually. Ashaloy Irasa. So this Nara was not engaged. Prat, the Nara. Shinis Arasov Niskarsha, except for Nara, who was already engaged. So even after she got divorced from that engagement, Shein lo knas, there is no knas. Divrei, whose Shita is this? Rabesi Aglili. But Rabbi Kiva Aimer, Yesh lo knas. Even in this situation, there is knas. I listen to the next two words. Uknasa lovia. You see, in contrast to Rabbi Kiva and our Mishnah, who agrees that there's some change that took place by the Narashinus Ars. Typically, payment goes to father, now it goes to her. In the Brysa, this is the Brysa's version of Rabbi Kiva's Shita, there's no change at all. Even a Narashinus Arsa gets Knas and it goes to the father, as it always does. And the Gemara later will ask on this. It appears that there are two versions of Rabbi Kiva. But in any case, Rabbi Kiva insists that even a Narish in his Arsa is deserving of Knas. And actually, the argument, the, there's a claim to back this up. Why? Since typically, a father is entitled to receive the Kiddushan payment given on account of his daughter's engagement. And likewise, a father is entitled to receive the Knas money on account of his daughter's Ainus. We connect the two ideas, and we say ma kesef kedushel, just like money, on account of her engagement. Avol pishinis arshav in his gash. Even if this nara got engaged and divorced and engaged and divorced over and over, father is still entitled to receive that money. Le'avia, until she becomes a begeris and leaves his, um, you know, jurisdiction. As long as she's still a nara, the pasuk teaches us father receives any money given on given on behalf of her kedushin, which means the fellow engages her. Gives money to be Mikalashur, that money goes to the father. Av Kesef Knasa, likewise. Payment given for the Knas upon interact, interacting with her forcefully. Avo Pishinis Arsav Nesgarsha Lovia, even if she was engaged and got, got divorced, that money goes to father. And therefore, Rabbi Kiva concludes even a Nara in this state will hand over the money to her father. In Cain, if that's the case, so why then does the Pasuk stipulate that a Nara must be Loyoyrasa? If we're saying that even an engaged Nara has the same exact Allah, Mufna, you're right, it's an extra Pasuk, an extra Lashen, which is here to generate a Hekish, and generate and trigger a Xerashava to teach us other Allahs. How much does this fellow have to pay? What type of currency does the fellow have to pay when he is not, ma'ana is the nara? So we use these words, ashaloy rasa, to teach us those halachis. Ne'er markan ashaloy rasa. Over here by the oynes, the pasuk, mentions this term, ashaloy rasa. Ve'ne'er lahalan, and likewise, by the mafata, the fellow who seduced the nara. It says the same lashon, ashaloy rasa. We connect the two. Ma'kan nun, just like over here by the oynes. It's a payment of 50. As the Pasuk says, Afla Halon Nun, likewise, by the Mafata, it's a payment of 50. What type of currency? Uma Halon Shekolem, just like Shkolem, by Mafata, it is Shkolem, as the Pasuk says, Yishkol, Afkan Shkolem, likewise, by the Oynes, it's 50 Shekolem. So the words, Ashaloya Rosa, are available to generate the Gdeyoshava, and actually not, they're not coming to cancel. Knas, in the case of an Isha, a Naro, who is Nisars. Asks the Gemara. 
You see, the Pasuk gives us three preconditions for Kanas. Besula, Nara, and Ashaloy Ayrosa. What are we saying, according to Rabbi Kiva? Besula is an absolute requirement. There's no tinkering with that. Nara, non-negotiable. But Ashaloy Ayrosa, that's negotiable. That's an extra Pasuk meant for the Gzera Shava. And we don't really take it literally, so to speak. That's not really a precondition for Knas. Why do you pick and choose this Pasuk over that? This is literal and this is not literal. Maybe reverse it. This is literal and that's not literal. Rabbi Kiva, my chazas. What prompts you to, you know, to uh, prefer the Ashalai Rasa, the words Ashalai Rasa, Ligzer Shava is not coming for the literal stipulation, rather Ligzer Shava. Upsula the Mutibula. But the word Basula, oh, that's literal, that's absolute. That's etched in stone. She must be a Basula. Perhaps the other way around. Hey, Ma, maybe we'll say like this. Besula Lixera Shava. She doesn't really need to be the Basula. It's not literal. The word Basula is just to generate an Exer Shava between Oynes and Mefata, because in both contexts we find the word Basula. We draw halachas from one to the other, 50, Shkalim, etc. Vashaloya Rasa. And the words Ashaloya Rasa, that's to be taken seriously. That's literal. Pratla Narashinis Arsavnis Gasha. To exempt. To accept. A Naro who had been engaged. So who says you go this way, maybe the other way? Answer to Gemara, missed up. It is probable that the words Ashaloya Rasa is not really meant to be taken literally, but rather Lixera Shavat. It's coming to make that Zera Shavat. Why? Because because even if she was already engaged let's face it it's only engagement she's still going to be the Nara she's still going to be the Psula so she's conforming to the rest of the stipulations in the Pasa so she's good to go we apply a Knas <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, why do you prefer this uh, stipulation? why do you prefer this requirement? Adrava maybe the other way around Let's say besula. The word besula is not literal. She doesn't have to be a besula. Rather, the word besula is merely lixer shava. It's coming to make lixer shava to teach us the halacha of you know the fifty of the shikolim. But she doesn't really need to be a besula. Why? Because as long as she has the other conditions going for her, shareini kareba ashaloyerasa. Because after all, she's still a nara and she's not engaged. You know, as long as she has two out of three, what's the difference if it's these two or those two? Why do you uh, insist that Basula is a requirement? Nara is absolute, but Ashaloya Rasa, that can be uh, negotiated. Right? That can be put by the wayside. That's for the Xerah Shava. Maybe uh, Ashaloya Rasa is absolute, uh, Nara is absolute, but Basula is just for the Xerah Shava. You don't really need a Basula. Answers the Gemara, there is reason for this. Mistavr, it's logical to say that a, a, a Baula loses that knas ability. Likewise, a, a bagaris, meaning she's past Nara, she's already a full adult, it's different. You know why? Ha'ishtani gufa, because in this case, her guf went through a change. So for instance, if she's a non so her guf already transitioned. So now when this fellow gets involved with her ba'inus, Rashi says, the bagam, the effect isn't so severely felt. She was already a Beulah. The same thing with a, an Isha, who's no longer a Nara. She's a Begeris. And we know from many Gemaras that a Begeris is Besulam have already diminished somewhat. So the Shini HaGuf already took place somewhat. And therefore, when it, this fellow gets involved with her, there is no Knas. But, Vaha, Lo Yishtani Gufa. An Isha who is a Besulam, who is a Nara, but simply was engaged. That factor is external. It doesn't really speak about the Isha's goof herself. She hasn't really undergone much of a change personally. And therefore, it's a swara to say that she retains her knas status. So that's the bottom line. According to Rabbi Kiva, she must be a Nara. She must be a Basula. But engaged? It's not so terrible. Even if she was engaged and now is divorced, Knas still applies. According to Rabbi Kiva and our Mishnah, some change did happen. The Knas now goes to herself. She keeps it. According to Rabbi Kiva and the Bryce, so no change at all. Her father maintains 
the rights to that money. Asks the Gemara. For Rabbi Yisya Glili has svarim another. You see, Rabbi Kiva used the words Ashaloya Rasa to connect us to the Mafata. This way we know that it's 50 Shkalim, etc. Rabbi Yisya Glili, on the other hand, used the word Ashaloya Rasa literally. She must be unengaged. If she was engaged at some point, there is no knas. So according to him, how do we know the, the halacha that we derived with the Gzera Shava? He doesn't have an extra pasuk for the Gzera Shava. Rabbi Yisak Lili, hai svara, this halacha, a 50 shakala, minali, how does he know this? Nafkalei, midasanya, he has another drasha. Kes of Yishkal, kimai rabsulist, the pasuk by Mephata says, he must pay like the payment issued for Isha's besulim by, by uh, knas. What's the point of connecting Mefata to Oynes? She the payment given upon being Mefata and Isha, is similar to Moyer like the payment issued by the Oynes. And just like over there it's 50, over here it's 50. Sorry, just like, um, right, just like over here, She Heizeh just like Moyer which is the payment for Knas. The Torah clearly says it's 50. Oynes of Knas is 50. And likewise, over here, by the Mafata, it's 50 as well. What type of currency? Umay Rab is Kazeh. And the payment given by the Oynes. The 50 is Shikolim, just like Kazeh, just like the payment by Mafata, which is Shikolim. So he learns the same idea from the other Pasuk. Now, let's go back to Rabbi Kiva. We have a seeming contradiction. Kasha, the Rabbi Kiva, the Rabbi Kiva. <laughs> the Rabbi Kiva, the Mishnah says, even a Nara, Shinis Arsa, will have Knas, but the Knas is now kept by the Isha herself, rather than go to her father. And the Braisa, Rabbi Kiva says, the Knas still goes to father. To Tanoi, well, leave the Rabbi Kiva. In fact, there are two versions of Rabbi Kiva. So, bottom line is, we have three Shites here. By a Nara, Shinis Arsa, of Nizgarsha. According to Rabbi Siaglili, it doesn't fit the bill. There is no Knas at all. According to Rabbi Kiva, there is knas. According to the Mishnah, it goes to herself. According to the Brisa, it goes to her father. Now, according to Rabbi Kiva and our Mishnah, a nourish in this arsa is somewhat affected by her engagement. Typically, the knas payment goes to father. But in this case, since she's not really conforming to the Pasuk, Pasuk says, Ashaloya Rasa. She was engaged. So although we keep the knas in place, but it's directed to herself, she keeps it. Because after all, after all said and done, there is a Pasek, even though you, you, you use the Pasek for the Gzera Shava, for the 50 Shkallim, but the fact is, there is a simple meaning to the Pasek as well. You can't ignore the simple meaning of the Pasek, which indicates that if there is some erison, the Allah does change. So in fact, it does change somewhat, slightly changes. There is knas payment, but instead of going to father, she keeps it. So that works. It's fully understandable. It makes sense. According to Rekiv in the Mishnah, which utilized the word Ashaloya Rasa for the Allah 50, you should call him, right? It's not going to come and mapkale and undo, and totally eradicate. The simple meaning of the Pasuk, which says, Ashaloya Rasa, Knas only applies when she's not engaged. So, it will not undo the entire Pasuk, Mipashte Legamri, from its basic meaning. Because there is some deviation in this case. Instead of it going to her father, it goes to herself. So, there was some change. El Lord Rekiva the Bryce, but according to Rekiva the Bryce, the Pasuk says, Ashaloy Eros. What do we say? Even if she was engaged, there was Knas, just as before. And it goes to Father. Asik Shava, just because he used the words, Ashaloy Eros, of the Shava, of the 50 Shakalm, is that Shava going to come and undo the basic, simple meaning of the Pasuk? Umapke, and undo the Pashtel Legamri from the simple meaning of the Pasuk? How can we ignore the simple, basic meaning of the Pasuk? Which seems to say that if there's engagement involved, there's no knas, or at least there's some change in the Allah. Amar, Nachmar, Bar Yitzchak, Karibay. Let's sort of revise, relearn. It's a drasha. We'll view the word differently. Karibay, read it 
instead of Ashaloi, Aira Sa, she must be an Isha who never was engaged. Rather, we read it Ashaloi Arusa, she isn't presently engaged. Oh, that's a requirement. But if she's engaged right now, then there's no knas. Asks the Gemara, that's simple. Arusa Baskili, she's currently engaged and she's an Isha Ish, of course. Involving with this Isha is Skila. Of course, there's no payment. We don't need a Pasuk for that. We do. Sagada de Chamina, there would be room to think. After all, this payment isn't basic. Chi of Mammon, it's a Knas. Sagada de Chamina, this is similar to the Gemara Naman Aleph. Since this idea of payment upon being Ma'anas and Isha is a, is a knas, it's something unconventional, I would say, even if this fellow is getting Misa because he got involved with a Nara who is currently engaged, even though Misa is applied to him, Mishal and Hoslav to pay because it's a knas, the he doesn't. Asks the Gemara. But according to Rabbah, you do, you do pay in this case. Rabbah was the one who held that knas can be added to misal. Rabbah the Amar. Chidesh or Shechid Shatayr beknas. The Torah is introducing something new with knas, meaning this idea of knas doesn't fit conventional guidelines. And therefore, Avagav the Miktil Mishalim, even if he's going to get misal, he still have to pay the knas. Michael and Memar, so according to him, what is the Pasuk teaching us? That if she's engaged, there's no payment, there is payment. Because knas can be added to Misa. Michael and Mimar. So according to him, how do we learn the Pasuk? Answer is, <laughs> he goes with the other version of Rabbi Akiva. Savala, Rabbi will follow the Shita of Rabbi Akiva de Masnison. Rabbi Akiva in our Mishnah who maintains that we read the Pasuk the way it's written, Ashalai Oirasa. That only an Isha, who never had prior engagement experience, we're speaking about past experience, only in that case do we apply the comprehensive system of Knas. But otherwise, if she had prior engagement experience, there's some change that occurs, which basically means although Knas is paid, but she keeps it. So according to Rekiva and the Mishnah, we don't have to change the spelling, so to speak. Ashaloi Eirasa remains as such. She never had engagement, because otherwise, something happens. There is Knas payment, but it goes to herself. The Kasha was only according to Rekiva and the Bryce. We sort of seem to ignore Ashaloi Eirasa, because he seemed to say that even if there was prior engagement experience, nothing changes. There's Knas and she gives it to her father. The question was, how can we ignore the actual Pasuk? So we had to tweak, uh, tweak, tweak it a bit instead of Ashalaya Rasa, Ashalaya Rusa. And that generated the Kasha and Rabba. But according to Rabba, he'll take the other approach. But of course, uh, even a case where there's Misa, according to Rabba, there'll be a Knas. Tana Rabban, we have a Braisa, which says, Knas Alami. To whom do we direct the Knas payments? La'avia, to father. Some say La'atzma, to herself. La'atzma, amai, why does it go to herself? Her father is meant to accept payment. Omar of Chizda was speaking about a unique case. The case in our sugya. Hacha ben Nara, shinas arasav in garsha askina in Nara, who had been engaged and now divorced. And the question is, where does the money go to? And obviously, we're going according to Shittas Rebbe Kiva, there is Knas, the question is, where does it go? We have two versions. Vilka Mifilki, Biplukta, the Rebbe Kiva, the Masnison, Rabbi Kiva the Bryce, and these two sheetas in this Bryce reflect the two versions of Rabbi Kiva. The first sheetah that the Knas goes to father, that reflects Rabbi Kiva of the Bryce. Whereas the second sheetah, that she keeps the money, that is consistent with Rabbi Kiva and Aumish. Am Rabbi, Bo Ole O Mesa, Pater. Suppose this fellow involved himself with a Naro. So that triggers the Chiva of Knas, and then she passes away before. Her father nailed him down before her father got Bezin to issue a verdict against him. Now she's no longer amongst the living. Does he have to pay Knaz to father or not? Potter is completely Potter. Why should Nemar? The Nos and Levi Anaro. The perpetrator pays the father of the Nara. We learn she must be around. Veloy Lavi Mesa as opposed to a father of a Mesa. Continues the Gemara. Most of the Pshitele Abayi. This halacha, which was 
obvious to Abaye. Most of the Pshita laid Abaye that what? The Khiv only applies if, her, if his son, if his daughter is still around. Otherwise, he's Pater. Me boy le Rava was actually a question posed by Rava. Rava wasn't unsure about this Allah. How do we know? The boy Rava. Rava posed the following question. We know that Khiv Knas only applies to a Nara. Right? As soon as she turns adult, until six months later, she's considered a Nara. During that, that window of Naros, Knas would apply. But let's say a fellow was Ma'anase Nara. And by the time father got around to take him to Bezdin, she turned a boy Geras. We're going to learn later in Dafmim Aleph. Although the fellow has to pay, but the money goes to her herself. Goes to the Isha herself. Now let's say he was involved with a Nara. She was past 12, but not yet a Begeris. She was two days shy of being a Begeris. And then she passes away. Three days later, father goes to Bezin, and there's a Gemar Din issued against his fellow. He must pay up. Who does the money go to? To father? Or perhaps to the daughter's uh, Yarsham shed, a son or whatever? Who's entitled to the payment? The boy Rava. Rava had the shy. Yesh beggar Bekever. The fact that she's in a caver, she's already passed away. Does she achieve, so to speak, the state of Bagrus, even though she's no longer here? In which case, father loses rights to the money, because if she would be around, she would have been past the age of Bagrus. It's all theoretical, obviously. She's not maturing in the kever, but it means in terms of the time frame. If she would have been around, father would not have any rights to this money. So you can't have rights to the money now. It goes to her descendants. Or you ain't beggar but kever. Or perhaps the concept of Bagrus doesn't apply once she passes away. And the Gemara explains. Yeish beggar but kever. Does Bagrus kick in? Even in this stage. With the Benohavi. And therefore father has no rights to the money. Rather her son gets it. Or perhaps. Ain't beggar but kever. Once she passes away. She cannot achieve even theoretical Bagrus. We treat her as a Nara. And who gets the money? The money belongs to the father. So bottom line is. Rubber is alluding to paying a father even when daughter is not around. And that is not like Shita Sabaye, who says that if daughter is not around, he is potter. Okay, let's do a quick Hazar. We started with a, a sugya of Misa with Mamain. When there's Misa, there's no Mamain. Be it a Misa Chamura, be it a Misa Kala, be it a Misa Bish, be it when. Uh, he did a, a masa which generates misa because it was mazed, or even if he did that act with shagi, where there is no actual misa, but there is no payment at all. According to the uh, prevalent sheet in the Gemara, even if it's a knas payment, it's not added to misa. In order for knas to be triggered, we must fulfill three conditions. She's a nara, a besula, and the pasuk adds the word ashaloy erosa. According to Rabbi Isaac Lili, it's all taken literally. So if she's not a Nara, or not a Basula, or had been previously engaged, even though she's no longer engaged, there is no Knas at all. According to Rabbi Kiva, it's not so. Nara, it's absolute. Basula, that's absolute. But Ashaloya Rasa, uh, it's primarily used for the Xerah Shava, and therefore it's not really a requirement. According to Rabbi Kiva and the Brisa, nothing changes. There's Knas, and Knas belongs to the Father. According to Rabbi Kiva in the Mishnah, there is some change that occurs. Instead of going to father, she receives the uh, repayment. We ended with a halacha, the name of Abaye. Ba'alel Umesa, there is no payment, and Rabbi disagrees. All the best to you, and Atzalacha Rabbi.